1987, Florida fans witnessed the end of a great career at quarterback and the beginning of another at tailback. They saw their first bowl trip in four years. I personally want to thank Sunbank for making this film possible, a story about the records and excitement of the 1987 season. Would you like a Gator fan? Program, program, Florida program. I'm just a Gator booster. Go out there and stop. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Florida Field for another season of exciting Gator football. The short drop, unloads it deep for the corner of the end zone. Bill Fitz the catch, touchdown. No wide receivers. They just line up, power football, and a handoff to Emmett Smith. He dives over the top and in for the touchdown. It's going to be Simmons from the six-yard line to the 15, the 20, cuts left to the 25, turns the corner at the 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. He cuts back to the right, ran into his own man to the five. He scores! Florida's 1987 season will be remembered as a year of triumphs of the old and new. A year the Gators felt the sting of an earlier punishment, but responded with a winning regular season, a postseason bowl berth, and some incredible individual records. Those pounding footsteps that shatter a quarterback's poise and confidence belong to senior Clifford Charlton. Despite double and even triple teaming, number 56 joined Alonzo Johnson and Wilbur Marshall in the Gator record book as the all-time sack and tackle for loss leader. Eighteen-year-old freshman Emmett Smith made more of an impact on this team than any first-year player in Gator history, shattering just about every Florida rushing record. As Gator fans cheered Smith's unlimited potential, they also found excitement with another man who had become a role model to the young. Kerwin Bell, the unheralded, unrecruited walk-on from Mayo, finished a brilliant career as one of the greatest passers in Southeastern Conference history. These dedicated and talented men were the record setters on a Florida team that appeared on national television eight times. They were the foundation of a Florida team that would face seven opponents ranked in the top 12. And in spite of a nagging blast of injuries, they were a squad that fought hard against staggering odds and earned the school's first bowl invitation in four years. As the season opened, the Gators embarked on the toughest road schedule in college football. And starting it all in Miami was not the way to baptize a young team. An opening game setback brought this youthful Florida squad home to Gator country, where confidence was rebuilt and a young runner from Pensacola wrote his first headlines. Bell gets to Emmett Smith. He got a hole across the 30 to the 40. Smith cuts to the left to the 50. Emmett Smith to the 40. Emmett Smith to the 30. Emmett Smith to the 20. Emmett to the 5. Touchdown, Emmett Smith! Well, that's what all the Gator fans have been waiting on. And uh, already Emmett has produced it. He's shown you he makes people miss him at the line of scrimmage. A 66-yard touchdown run by Emmett Smith. And welcome to the Emmett Smith era of Florida football. Smith's 66-yard burst seemed to ignite a Gator explosion that lit up the scoreboard with seven touchdowns. The 52 to nothing demolition of Tulsa was Florida's most one-sided shutout since 1953. In their Southeastern Conference opener, the Gators faced an Alabama team that lived by the run. To calm the tide, defensive leaders Clifford Charlton and Jeff Roth knew they had to put some hits on number 26, Bobby Humphrey. We knew that going to the game that um, they had a, a heck of a running back and a good offensive scheme. And we felt like we had to go in there and if we can stop the running game, which is Bobby Humphrey, that we have a good chance of beating Alabama. We knew that we had to play basically of almost a perfect defensive game plan because if we didn't, that that would leave some cracks open for him to take off and get some big gainers. With Charlton in charge and Lewis Oliver adding eight tackles to be named SEC Defender of the Week, 
the Gators dried, dyed, and fried the tie. Six times, Bama quarterbacks were sacked. And Bobby Humphrey's Heisman hopes were buried under a cascading sea of orange helmets. It proved a game plan executed to perfection by a healthy and hungry Gator defense. Allowing Kerwin Bell to unleash a Florida attack that picked on Alabama's vulnerable secondary. That called on senior Robert McGinty for three field goals. And introduced a new Heisman Trophy candidate named Emmett Smith to a national TV audience. And I feel that if we went out with a positive attitude and determination to win, we can do whatever we want to do. All Smith did in his first game as starting tailback was break Florida's all-time record for number of carries with 39. And in the process, gained more yards in a single game than any runner in Gator history. As he battered and broke the Tide's defense for 224 yards, Smith burst into the national spotlight with one of the most awesome displays of running by any collegiate back ever. Not big, not fast, just impossible to stop. That's Emmett Smith. The offensive line of Bob Sims, David Williams, Tracy Daniels, Charlie Wright, and Jimmy Davis pounded open the hole, and Smith motored through them for two touchdowns, a Florida rushing record, and the driving force behind a superb team victory over bowl-bound Alabama. The orange and blue offense continued to roll up big numbers. 573 yards total offense against Mississippi State. It was the second highest effort against a conference rival in school history. Averaging nearly eight yards a play, Florida turned the Bulldogs into gator meat with the blazing speed of Wayne Williams and hammered them into submission with 173 yards from Emmett Smith. The flying freshman was again the lead strike weapon of a diverse Florida offense. His three touchdowns were the most scored in one game by a Gator since Neil Anderson in 1982. Bell's arm painted rainbow aerials for a 200-yard game, and receivers like Stacy Simmons proved perfect targets. The Gators' 38-3 triumph was their largest margin of victory ever over Mississippi State in a series that dates back to the 1920s. Now ranked in the top 20, the Gators invaded Death Valley and punched holes in an LSU defense that surrendered 184 yards to the nation's leading rusher, Emmett Smith. Despite a narrow, extremely hard-fought three-point setback, the Gators had played solid football on both sides of the line and remained one of the top teams in the conference title race. A week later, Florida returned home, welcoming Cal State with a nasty defense that generally tossed the Titans around like they were bowling pins. On offense, Florida's young talent contributed to a blistering attack as freshman receiver Ernie Mills sped under Bell's 28-yard bomb. And 245-pound freshman fullback Willie McGrady bulldozed into the end zone. The 65-0 victory was the largest shutout margin for a Florida team in 59 years. 
When Temple visited Gainesville for homecoming, Kerwin Bell and a big play record-setting offense were the focus of attention. I've been getting him in the one. I can cut him off. I can okay. cut him off every time he's in the one. It's no big deal. Uh, I just did one at that time. I guess they have to be aware if they both come, you got in, right? Like you hit them, yeah. you hit them late. I know. You be aware. Like if he's coming inside, I want your outside shoulder. Okay? Oh, you're inside shoulder, so you can fit him inside. 40, 40, inside! Go, go. 218, that's... As Bell continued to encourage his teammates, another play was discussed with Galen Hall that would result in six more points. Spread right split, blue option on three. Spread right split, blue Y option begins as a simple dump off to Stacy Simmons. And quickly turns into one of the most exciting plays of the season. He finds his man Simmons open at the 36. Simmons cuts it back to the midfield area at the 40. Still on his feet, looking for room. Turns the corner at the 45 to the 50. To the 40. Oh, to the 30. To the 20. They'll never catch him. Touchdown, Stacy Simmons. Stacy Simmons is a rocket. When you get him out ahead of people, there are very few people in this country going to catch him. 70 dazzling racehorse yards. And if Florida's longest touchdown pass in two years wasn't enough, there remained an NCAA record to be set. No runner ever had gained 1,000 yards in less than his first eight games until Florida's remarkable number 22. Florida from the 21. Bell hands off to Emmett Smith, exploding off left tackle to the 25-30. 45-40, 45, run out of bounds at the 46-yard line, and there's the record. A 1,000 yards for Emmett Smith. You think about how long college football has been played, and think about a freshman doing something like that. It is just incredible what Emmett Smith has done in seven football games. 18 years old, team tribe Jeff Roth, Ricky Mulberry, Henry Brown from the defensive team going out there to meet him and help him celebrate it coming off the field. The team is proud of achievement like that. The run at the end of the Temple game, I think... Uh, the offensive line, the defensive people, the fans, and everyone shared in that. And uh, just an interesting story. Uh, they had someone wanted to come out and take a picture of Emmett during practice. And Emmett says, well, you can take me, but you also have to have the offensive line with me. I was glad that, that I did get the 1,000-yard record. And I believe all my teammates was pretty glad, too. Uh, I feel, to me, personally, I think it was, it was a team effort, and it was a team record. Oh, yeah. Good job, man. Hey. Truly a homecoming to remember for the Florida Gators, their fans, and an astonishing young record breaker named Emmett Smith. <laughs> for the next two weeks, the Gators' road schedule poisoned them. First at Auburn, then at Jacksonville against Georgia. A pair of disappointing setbacks presented a must game with Kentucky seven days later. Deep inside, every coach and player knew the roller coaster season narrowed down to this. A victory over Kentucky would produce a coveted bowl bid and ensure a winning regular season. The Gators were willing to work to produce the desired results. They put you in motion, flip, call sell, a course. In the beginning, the Wildcats made the mistake of kicking to Stacy Simmons. The result was a 94-yard return, the longest since 1978, and a preview of the electrifying speed that could make Simmons one of the conference's most explosive players for the next two years. It took but 20 seconds for the Gators to gain an emotional lift that set the tone for a day of spectacular achievements. First and 10 from the Wildcats, 39. Bell faking the handoff to Smith, wants to throw deep for Simmons down near the goal line. Stacy juggles it and then catches it. What a great catch. What concentration by Stacy Simmons there who has turned into a big play football player. And Kerwin Bell has thrown more touchdown passes than anyone who has ever played in the Southeastern Conference.
We have Stacy really just clearing out. He's the deep man. He's running just a straight go route. I mean, anytime I get a chance to go up top like that and make a big play, then I'm going for it. And I, I have a lot of confidence in Stacy. And I'm, you know, I felt like he would make the play, and he made a, a spectacular catch out of it and made a great touchdown pass. You know, just to know that you've been able to accomplish something, uh, the 56 touchdowns against great competition, and um, doing it better than any other player in this conference, which has been some great players, Reeves, Spurrier, uh, Wayne Peace, um, you know, Joe Namath, Archie Manning, guys like that that I always looked up to and tried to be like as a quarterback. Um, and then to be the top, you know, after your career is over with is something special, something I always look back on and be proud of. Yes, Kerwin Bell could wear his pride with dignity. But Florida triumphs are always team victories. And the Gator defense sealed off any Kentucky dreams of spoiling the party. On its way to leading the SEC in total defense for the third time in the past four years, this Gator outfit preserved the victory that led Galen Hall to his first bowl trip as Florida head coach, a berth in the 1987 Aloha Bowl. A season-ending defeat at the hands of Florida State should not tarnish the accomplishments of an extremely talented senior class. These young men, surrounded by adversity on and off the field, became one of the most successful squads in the history of Gator football. This class can look back with pride on two end-of-the-season finishes in the national top five. They achieved a number one ranking, and they earned a first-place finish in the Southeastern Conference both for the first time in school history. They were a squad that faced the nation's toughest schedule twice, yet finished with a four-year regular season record of 30 wins, 12 losses, and two ties. Two seniors earned first-team All-America honors in 1987. Defensive back Jarvis Williams, who started every game of his four-year career. And number 56, Clifford Charlton, Florida's third consecutive linebacker to be named All-American. But the heart and soul of this senior class was a young man who walked on, fought through higher-rated competition to win a job, and then passed his way into the conference and university record books. Kerwin Bell leaves a large legacy at the University of Florida. The way he guided the 84 football team to the greatness that it was, uh, the 85 football team, the way he held that together, ultimately getting the uh, recognition of the records, uh, you already jammed touchdown pass in this conference. I think everyone that's connected with Kerwin Bell is a better person because he was here. With the seniors leading the way, the Gators enjoyed their holiday in the warm, wonderful surroundings of this Hawaiian paradise in the Pacific. Island traditions provided the backdrop at a special Aloha Bowl banquet. And the day before Christmas, the team shared a holiday party and dinner. There was not a single squad member who was not uplifted by the team's visit to the Shriners Children's Hospital, where bringing a smile to a youngster's face made the trip a huge success. Amidst all the excitement, it was not easy to keep minds on the business at hand, but combining sun, fun, and football was a fitting reward particularly for these seniors who kept this Gator program on course during some extremely difficult times. Against UCLA, Florida battled its fifth opponent that finished the season ranked in the top 10. A kamikaze schedule for a team struggling with a decided lack of depth.
When senior Anthony Williams caught Kerwin Bell's final Gator touchdown pass, it was not quite enough. And Florida's season ended with an even split in 12 games. In 1988, the Gators will continue to make life miserable for opponents, to show no mercy when the other team owns the football. The nucleus of the Southeastern Conference's top total defense of 1987 returns, including first-team All-American Lewis Oliver. We were a very close unit on, on defense, and, and all the guys came together when we needed them to. A member of the all-conference academic honor roll, Lewis Oliver led the Gators in interceptions and pass deflections in 1987. A quick-reacting, all-around athlete, Oliver should be a top candidate for major honors in 1988. Up front, middle guard Jeff Roth returns as one of two Gator defensive linemen to earn first-team all-conference honors. The other is tackle Rondy Weston, who continuously was a presence in enemy backfields and carved up Kentucky's offense with six solo tackles in the Gators' bowl-clenching victory. Behind the line, Florida's strong-arm defenders include sophomore Pat Moore, number 45, along with freshman Huey Richardson, number 90. On offense, second-team All-American David Williams will anchor the front wall, while all Florida's young wideouts return with a year's experience behind them. Led by the big play excitement of Stacy Simmons. Quick-footed Wayne Williams adds depth to the running core that will be headed by the top rusher in the Southeastern Conference and a young man who not only excited Florida fans with all the right moves, but gained the respect of teammates as well. Teammates like David Williams. He's a real shifty type runner, you know. He, he's got a broad range of vision, you know. He can see the holes open up, and uh, you know, if he doesn't see something to the right, he may see something to the left and cut back. And you know, he can make a couple extra yards on his, on his own if there's not a hole there for him. there to prove that he was as good a, a college player as he was a high school player. I know there are a lot of good runners around, but we're very glad that Emmett's with us. Powered by Emmett Smith and a solid, hard-hitting defense, the Gators can build from their record-setting achievements of 1987 and look for a return to national prominence in 1988.